you want to work with the people who understand the startups and build them as they grow and nurture, nurture that growth. Welcome to the Financial Innovations Podcast. We're helping CFOs save money and time by innovating cutting edge technology. We're really excited today to have Isla Anik uh, with us. Isla, very nice for uh, for you to join us. Well, thank you, Daniel. Uh, I appreciate this invite and this exciting opportunity to contribute to your uh, podcast and to answer your questions. Yeah, no, it's it's great. I'm I'm really excited about this episode in particular, just because you know I've spent a lot uh, of time in my career in the in, in um, the life sciences, and uh, you know to to hear a little bit about you know your company, what you guys are are doing, and you know we could then start talking a little bit about you know the journey to get to where you're at, and you know maybe some of the some of the places you're looking to go as well. Sure. Uh, first of all, uh, in Vivo Sciences, that is the company I co-founded with my scientific co-founders, Dr. Ted uh, Wakasuki and Dr. Elliot Elson in 2001, is a preclinical stage biotech company developing therapeutics, and it is companion diagnostics for cardiovascular and cardiometabolic disease using a precision medicine technology platform, which is an enabling platform for uh, precision cardiac drug development, currently not available in the industry. Uh, current approach is one drug for all of us. It's not working and clinical trials are failing. And one aspect that is important for financial uh, sector is that many heart failure drugs failed at phase three because they don't have a precision medicine implementation or enabling technologies, which we do. And that fail is very expensive. So chief financial officers or VCs will not be liking to invest because drug development is very expensive. And, and, and each stage is gets much more expensive and phase three fail. If there's a fail in that stage, it is like your investment goes and return of investment is not very much useful. So uh, investor last 10, 15 years shied away investing to innovation in the cardiac field. And because the VCs didn't get the returns expectations and only 3% of total VC money went into cardiac space, which we would love to change that. We would love more financial uh, pe people or CFOs try to understanding that there is a way to do the drug development for cardiac and cost effectively and the enabling technologies available, just like the cancer field. Cancer field, it is opposite. Precision medicine is very well developed and people are going for many drugs and that is very precisely defined for the patient population and they change on the, go on the diagnostics also like they are uh, defining the drug's effectiveness. And so the investment returns are there and there is also, of course, uh, insurance is expecting to be able to except more drugs in cancer, while the opposite true of only five or six drugs for uh, entire millions of populations in around the world. So I think this is a very good, uh, uh, I, I have an open invite to financial world to look a little bit differently, more innovatively, because tools are there, but we need now more believers coming in, in the financial sector to this area to help uh, make the innovation happening. Yeah, no, that that's great. And, you know, many reasons why I, you know, I always enjoy the projects that I do in the, in the life sciences field is one, you know, I think some of the most innovative um, implementations I've done have been for, you know, life sciences, you know, companies, but also, you know, when you start working in like, for example, the space that you guys are in at the size that you guys are, um, it requires you to, you know, um, do more with less, right? Uh, that you don't have the the Pfizer type of budget to just say, let's just go buy every single technology out there and see, you know, what works and, um, you know, what we can do and all of that. It, you know, it, you have to be a lot more disciplined with, you know, here's what we invest in, here's what we don't invest in. Um, you know, so, so maybe, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about like, um, you know, what, 
what kinds of tools that you find uh, helpful, um, you know, at, at the size that you're at, um, you know, and, and then we can talk, I guess, a little bit about, you know, getting from uh, the startup, you know, starting the starting your company over there to, to where you are now and, you know, maybe some of the tools that you found helpful at different stages that, you know, that you were at. I think uh, th there are very early stages, business planning and development for financial forecasting uh, tools are very helpful for the startup to figure out different scenarios and different uh, budget expectations or the you know percentage of growth expectations because you need to do multi multi-level scenarios uh, if that happens what will happen if your assumptions change what will happen your assumptions will change over time your cash flow will be affected by that over time if you have a revenue expectations uh, then uh, sales might be not the you know the way that you wanted to expect so there was a um I was uh, part of the Goldman Sachs uh, Babson College. I think they did a, I'm a scholar of uh, Goldman Sachs group that did uh, 10,000 uh, small business. And they, I'm very really grateful that they included me as a scholar, they sponsor for us to go to that training that was a pure financial training in the Babson College. And they introduced a planning tool, which is a life plan, or they call, I think they call life plan, somebody from California doing that. And that is a very uh, helpful tool for doing a forecast, you know, mini level forecast and assumptions that comes from your QuickBook. Uh, if you are using QuickBook, but some people use different QuickBook uh, samples. I will just uh, hope that they are not using by hand and spreadsheets only because that will get really complicated and the credibility of number one, they will not be able to get into grants uh, like SPIR, STTRs or uh, NSF, NCATs or NIH because NIH requires that you have to have uh, you know, books, very uh, of professional book keeping abilities and also the the separation of duties. That means you cannot just sign a check at the same time, enter the book at the same time, you know, go around and then do all the, you know, budgeting. You need to have levels, separation of duties, and you will be get audits if you have a certain level of funding from the government. So uh, if you want to grow and grow, um, you, you mean to grow, you really want to grow, you have to have, uh, you know, financial officers, chief financial officer. It could be a fractional in the beginning or a consultant, uh, or uh, you can hire them in and out. Like they need to look into your books. They have to do your tax. And, uh, but you have to think about while you have zero sitting in a book and you are just doing hypothesis, you cannot hire them, but tools have to be correct. So you build on them because you're building something and as, as you build, tools are not that expensive. But if you don't build them right, none of the financial people will like to touch those things that you build. They will like to rebuild this. That will be expensive. And so it is a beginning advice. Well, I have myself accounting and BA finance, <laughs> uh, you know, those, those things that I have uh, blessed to have because I have an interest in finance. But I was not somebody that does corporate finances. And that is why uh, it's also important to get that advice to bring the team early. Early enough, uh, the people who wants to help and who is capable and flexible to work with small businesses or small companies like um, life sciences, because they are small, but they can grow rapidly and things have to be adjusted. So... That I think is good, but as I said, QuickBooks, Life Plan, uh, Excel sheets that how to manage them, or cap, cap management tools. There are Carta. Like I just want to give one name, but there are many competition to Carta that you can use to manage your cap tap, or you can use to manage them on the internally. But after a while, it gets really complicated if you manage them because 409 regulations. And the rules you have to be, you know, right now the rules are getting more stricter. And that reason, I think it is very important 
to be a transparent with your investors too, to use those tools um, that is available and pick them maybe with your board or with your financial advisor. So I think this is just a, um, seeing how I did it uh, and I keep learning. So new tools comes, I have to learn because when I started in 2001, those tools not all available, but now it's available. The other part that I would like to make a recommendation to financial people, uh, Mass Challenge. Mass Challenge is a, a very, very large, small startup oriented biotech and others, uh, AI or software. Those invite many, many startups to compete. And now uh, we were, the, you know, uh, we were, we get there is their incubation uh, in 2020 in Boston. And they introduce us many different levels of uh, online software tools that you can utilize. And these are the people that like us, startups that are doing that, managing that. So you have to explore them because once you transfer your data, the other thing I would like to make sure that your data is going to come back to you and it confidentially will be kept because if they uh, hold hostage to your data, and you have to pay them to get out of the system that they, you are using to build your system, that is a problem in your growth. So those things, uh, you know, is are you sovereign? Can you protect your data? Uh, is your data will be sold by the provider? Uh, can, can your data be buildable, customizable to you? Can it grow? And can other people see, like, if, if I give an access to ch chief financial officer or an accountant, they can come and each time am I going to pay? So you have to think this from the beginning with the team or alone, if you don't have a team. But I think very good uh, advisors from chief financial officers or mentors, they know that and they advise according to the startup needs. You don't want to get an advice from a corporate CFO who doesn't understand the needs. You want to work with the people who understand the startups and build them as they grow and uh, how can I say nurture, nurture that growth. Right. Yeah. A lot of great uh, points that you made in there. You know, one of the ones that, you know, stands out, um, you know, as, as we're talking here is, you know, you mentioned about, the tools are only as good as, you know, the the data and the processes that you have underneath where, you know, so many times, uh, you know, we see companies that they're going and buying the tool because somebody says, you know, you need dashboards. So I bought dashboards, right? And, and then they go and hook it up and maybe your dashboards don't look as pretty as the demos that came in because there's some work that you have to do in terms of getting your data, um, you know, accurate, trustable, you know, and, and so forth. Um, so, you know, just making sure that you are ready for any type of tool or system that, you know, that you have, I think is, is, is very important. I agree. And also your team uh, is important because in startups, you raise funding. And when you raise funding, you might have a model. You are financially managing a cash flow that can either build through the selling something or revenue, like you have a product, you're selling, you have a service, you are selling, you have a cost you're incurring, you cost accounting, you need to understand the pricing uh, because people doesn't think about that, how that pricing is going to be relevant to your cost accounting and how you market price, you know, cost plus price, there are different ways, competitive pricing. And, and they don't think about that because if you price wrong, you won't get in there. Sometimes they discount everything and discounting forever after a while will take your brand and people will not put you a premium price next level. So a good strategic uh, you know, financial advisor can tell you uh, how not to do, what not to do. And secondly, if you are burning cash flow, your how long you have time uh, in that cash flow, they, they call runaway. And that runaway needs to be very clear upfront and it is ideal if you can have a two years, three years vision for what you're doing. If you cannot see your two, three years, if you have three months, six months, that is the most stressful company you want to be in. Because in the six months, you are in desperately trying to get 
funding from investors perceiving that you're going to make certain returns and debt really needs to be looked at by your financial advisors or the mentors because you cannot just keep saying i will get you five returns take from paul give the you know the mr john and take from john give the mr maybe they can do it but in a life science business if you do that you won't be running long uh some place you will be tripping you may be losing everybody's assets together and that is why i think uh building mentality in the cfo is very very important if if you will be working with someone if you want to create a legacy debt mentality is important or you have to look am i am i building this company because i'm going to sell it in 3 years and i am out of here then debt mentality you need a team for that kind of mentality what kind of returns i am here three years i'm out i'm next and next and next debt is also exist and nothing wrong if you want to be doing that but i have not seen in in our business in the life science that worked uh, so you have to be prepared for be in the business very long years for a, a cash flowing and if you don't cash flow what you're going to be doing and that is a very you know nail biting experience to start having so i think your team is more more valuable than your tools in the beginning because experienced team will know when to use which tool uh, or try but if you don't have an experience you blindly going into the unknown and hoping like wishful thinking and you are going to get all the things so that is the, i can say is a big difference in life science than other areas i think yeah no i i would agree with that and you know even just what you were saying about having aligning the team uh and getting the right expertise from the right person where you know when you think about life sciences typically you know you're not just forecasting out what's happening in the next 6 months or the next year you're looking at the full life cycle of you know the products that you're developing and many cases can be 20 plus years out where you know having that person that I just want to get in a couple of years get out you know it isn't going to work just because we're you know you're not even across the next phase of uh, of your trials by the time you want to you want to get out over there um you know but it's it's important uh, you know going back to what you were saying earlier about you know not necessarily just being on spreadsheets and having some types of tools because you know as you're looking to accomplish your goals whether that's um uh, raise more money whether that's you know look at cash flow of you know where you are as a business you're not just looking you know 2 3 months ahead you're you know you might be looking several you know several years ahead and it might become very challenging for you to do those types of activities in you know just an excel model or a google sheet or you know something very basic as opposed to you know using some of those those tools that that you had highlighted before and also in our company we are innovation we develop technology so when you develop technology your sources of revenue is different not every investor so volunteering to give their money when you have a high risk in development of technology and competitive and you are patenting something so there is a, a patenting process that needs to happen if you don't have a patent you develop technology people will steal it very happily and 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 they do that even you have a patent so the the i mean there is really viciousness out in the market for uh, ideas and then so they just wait for that ideas there are trained lawyers doing this job unfortunately so but in the financial side what i wanted to say you have a source you may go into a grant financing you may go for a contract financing or you may have uh, customers from contractual government customers because we we had that uh, you know opportunity to be able to do that then you do that you have a very different reporting financial reporting requirement you are under different A133 audit requirement than a regular audit and some even very big force in the beginning because I am here like since 2001 they didn't know how to how to do the government auditing contracting then they know how to do corporate you know financing the, the, their year even different 
cycle is different. Like September grant, you get this in the and August end, and that is how they are auditing that year because that money comes and that audit is very differently audited, all the expenses than the whole company audit. And and that is why and how, if the money source coming from A and they have a different requirement or a contract like a DOD contract, then you have to keep track of different spreadsheets, the different, you know, the line items in the QuickBooks or whatever software you are using. And you have to do your taxes according to the R&D, if you have R&D development, because uh, right now laws change, like expanding, expanding those R&D over depreciating them even, you know, five years, which have a significant consequences on uh, developing R&D type of companies or technology developers or software developers. So uh, being uh, aware about them, it is not static, it is changing. And uh, if you just know the financials for corporates, you may not understand what this company is doing when they come saying to, no, 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 I cannot use that spreadsheet because government audit requires this. Our year doesn't end in the 31st of December. We have a two ending in a year. You are like, oh my God, what is this people? But this is how the funding comes and investors may be now understanding uh, that also because I see lots of VCs now applying for SBIRs with their companies. And, and, and if they own more than 50%, they make the company ineligible to go to the FTA, you know, the SPIR contracts. And that is why you have to know how to control the company's shares and financial positions so they are still eligible for applying uh, if they have the potential for that. And so I think um, it's the magical financials that you have to, uh, multi-level individuals you need to talk and integrate. So it is a little bit complex and it can be stressful, but it also is a very good uh, and heavy record keeping, very heavy record keeping requirements. Right. Yeah, no, there, there's a lot. And, and, you know, it's funny that, you know, you mentioned, the uh, you know, about having to, you know, keep up to date on things like, you know, having having to have a legal team for patents and stuff, you know, that's. I have a, so a couple software businesses. I have some patents, and you know, I always remember the conversations that I had with with my lawyer as I was getting them. Where you know, he said, "Oh, apply for a patent." I said, "Okay, I'm good then, right?" No, no, no. Just because you have the patent doesn't mean you're protected, and just because you have the patent doesn't mean that other people aren't going to try to you know rip you off, and and it's up to you to go and find you know who's kind of infringing on it and and all that stuff. So, you know, it's. Um, it's, it's difficult. Uh, you know, I, I think a lot of people oversimplify in the process of, you know, just uh, starting up any kind of business to begin with. But especially in the life science field is, um, you know, it's uh, something that I wanted to, I guess, ask uh, next as, as since you have the you know experience of, you know, starting from, you know, from the ground up with the company. But, um, you know, how do you um, manage all the different activities that are required, um, you know, from grant funding, fundraising, all these different areas, you know, the the legal with the patents, the the legal with reviewing the patents and making sure that, you know, other people aren't infringing, you know, when, when you uh, are first starting up, you know, how do you manage all the different activities that need to happen, you know, given the constraints of you may not have 20 people when you start the company, you might have five people when you start the company, you know, how do you uh, manage all that? Yeah, I think uh, there is a differentiating, different, differentiating factor being a founder, being a paid CEO, okay, so, or a professional CEO. I came from a professional, uh, you know, management, executive management background from a Fortune 500. But I didn't know what it means to be an entrepreneur or a founder when you just start from the zero and everything is like waiting for you. Uh, even you are, you could be serving to everybody in the team in terms of the, their needs and buying things for them. Pen pencils is like, wait a second, what is going on? So you have to have a different uh, perspective 
But shortly, what I wanted to say is a founder, your time that you spend in the beginning and, and also in any new, any new things that you are going as a founder, because you may do this again and again, uh, it's enormous. So people doesn't understand it, how demanding and how consuming the time, especially they have to learn if they didn't do that before and they have to learn it as a new, that is, uh, you need to be either young and high energy individual and very, very organized. And you have to organize your own family interaction. You need to be able to get support from your family for this. Otherwise you can lose your family or you can be a very imbalanced person because it will push you. It will push you to the, uh, to the edge. Like there will be days you will say, I don't know. I don't know what to get myself into this. This is too much. And, or you are going to, to start delegating. Now delegating to whom? Because if you are doing this for not paid in the beginning with your shares uh, or just for your passion, because you're passionate, which all happened to me. So I am telling the things that I did. And so coming from an experience and long years not being paid and doing this for because you believe in it, doing this because you wanted to bring a new technology to the heart failure because I lost my own father to heart failure. And it was very painful. I was around very young in my twenties and I became a provider. And that is why actually I wanted to learn financial area. I came from Turkey and in that kind of a country, when you don't have a father figure that is no longer and suddenly disappears from the life, your entire family now needs to be fed and take after and you need to you know figure out something and i was a student so i drive myself into learning everything possible in financial area to be able to to provide for myself provide for my family and do whatever i can do to be you know making the life happen and when the chance emerged then i wanted to come as a founder then i took a risk of letting go my professional career and in a corporate setting, which was doing well, making very well, you know, easy. I will not say easy money, but I will say easy money to co compared to a founder <laughs> because founder, 100% risk, no guarantees, and you're spending your own dollars. And when you spend your own dollars, you learn to be very, very focused. And you also learn to delegate and learn to sniff through the people that will come to your business and then make partners. So sometimes if you cannot pay, then they will come as a partner and they will come as a partner. Then you need to understand if that partners are compatible and they have this right vision and they are contributing in the area that you are weak or you don't know you need help. And sometimes mentors and board members, and this, it is your job to attract them. It is your job to bring everything into the table and build and grow them. So you have to take a long view, but on the other side, uh, you are investing yourself. And if you make a mistake, you are blaming yourself for that mistake. A good learning experience by mistake with your own money, it will be lifetime learning because you are not going to do that again. Uh, and that is the, I think, one very difficult thing to be a founder. People are not ready sometimes to, they, they will do it the fun part, but when the very difficult things comes that they have to, oh my gosh, this is coming to my house. I have to sell my house, mortgage my house, do this, to do that. Uh, how my school ch children, and that is the time that you may need to look how to do this business at the same time to do all the other expensive responsibilities or maybe not you're not cut for that at that time. And you you want to be ready for that kind of financial situation and uh, and be capable of bringing right teams, right people and waiting and not burning the cash flow unnecessarily and, and flexible enough to go into maybe a, a consult for someone else and then come and do your job. So it's not like going to... Uh, be uh, in a disastrous condition but that all happens if you don't take money in the beginning from the investors like VCs who is expecting that you will bring returns in the first year second year and third year 
if you do so, then you have to comply and then make sure that the plans that you are bringing will bring those returns to the investors. Because if investor doesn't see the return, they will shut your company down and they will take the money back. And those risk is sometimes a bigger learning because I had other founder friends in life science. They are professors. They did wonderful job. They have good technologies, but investor put 5 million and after a year, pull all the money in one night and overnight like that. And, and that was like, pull the cup, you know, that, that, you know, disable everybody. So there are, uh, ex, you know, stories on that side. And that is why I think how to do it. And if you don't understand your books, your financials, and if you count on your accounting or tax person to do your books, and you have no clue about this, you think it will run by itself. I will highly recommend not to do that and be partner to your chief financial officer. If you don't, ha- if you have a one, if you're lucky to have one, or you have to doom to learn <laughs> the QuickBooks to learn the accounting, what it means, and it is a loss of work. So, you, uh, I, I prefer if I didn't know anything about. I did know that, but if I didn't know anything about it, I like to work with someone who knows. And I, I, luxury of having someone else doing that for you, with you, is much better than you end up doing everything, but uh, they have to be ready for setting everything up. So this kind of podcast, maybe they'll help them. The the range of different activities they need to decide on. So advisors, there are right now really good founder to founder or CEO, CEO or CFO, uh, you know, uh, groups that they talk to each other, startup groups that they can go and talk to each other. They can advise each other. There are blogs like this, podcasts like that, or they can take an advice from a, a chief financial officer or someone who is doing this already for like a lawyer, you know, get a few hours of an advice to set up the company and to learn the all financial requirements. And that could be also very well uh, money utilized in that case, but they have to maintain it. And if they don't know how to maintain it, they need to hire people who will come in and do that books as they go. They cannot just do it. One person cannot do everything. That is a conflict of interest. They will get themselves into a big problem in the future for a larger funding to come in. And and VCs will like to, you know, uh, don't like the companies who doesn't have proper financials. They don't trust the financials. Because founders might be double dipping, you know, founders might be using the company for their own expenses and stuff. How to how to be ethical and integrity with other people's money? Uh, it is a, a big responsibility. So you need to share that responsibility with a professional board. You cannot just say, "I'm going to do that alone." That is a very big mistake from the beginning. You need to have board. Board may change. And financial uh, knowledge and acumen, like legal knowledge and acumen, is a necessity. So if anyone thinking that I will do this without needing a financial partner, if they don't know it, they forget about it. I mean, it will get so expensive to work with the, uh, like four big accounting company and then count that they're going to be doing their books and it is the same thing if you have a patent position and if you're going to work with a, a long years with a patent attorney, you have to be really ready for large expenses going out. So that is why I think uh, you have to do mindfully and learn about the budgets of it and know how long you think you are planning to go, like one year, two year, or five years to 10 years. And that is why I think uh, as a partner, someone in the uh, team needs to have that knowledge, financial knowledge. Uh, they may not do it, but they have to have the knowledge so they can hire the people or they can work with people, they can partner. And I think when you ask how I did it, my luck was I know the knowledge, I have the knowledge, but it wasn't sufficient enough and it was not legal that I can do all so you have to still hire, but and you have to persuade your other team members who didn't think that we are wasting the dollars. Why do we, why financial, like um, science is important, patents is important, 
but I had to explain uh, some of my partners why financial side is very important, why books are very important. And they didn't understand that part because for them it's a simple, uh, just, you know, three stuff, put it there. Okay, what is the importance? I said, it is not like that. There are lots of regulations and uh, utilizations of long-term budget finances. And then people will look at cost of goods sold, pricing, who is entering, why do you decide it? Where are the different buckets of each course, how you accumulate them, inventory, life in and life, you know, FIFO, LIFO, it changes all the entire tax, you know, implementations that you have or depreciations when you buy things and how, because in life science, we have lots of uh, equipment and then even computers and equipment, but there are like hundred thousand dollar equipment that you have to understand how to, there's a lab space, there's a, you know, uh, the, the labs is very high quality, ISO quality. So the, it is a very heavy expense, heavy investment requirement. How to do that part uh, can be with different ways. You can build a lab, but it is a good decision to think through uh, as a long term, how you maintain that lab and how to protect the confidentiality in the lab as a standalone company, because some people do it under university, but uh, you know, not everybody lucky to do so. We are a standalone lab, and that is why uh, it was uh, much more challenging to build that kind of a company. It was very long years to maintain that. Uh, but as I said, um, if there's a lot of sacrifice, so you ask to me, maybe there are lucky ones. They didn't sacrifice. They hired five people, investor pay them, and they went out. And I, I really want to be like them, but I had like zero support, zero any funding. And they, they expect everything expected that I will do it. So I had like multiple heads, multiple jobs. And you have to have lots of energy and you can quit anytime because it can get overwhelming. So... It, personality is important. As I said, if you have children, you are a good founder. <laughs> I'm not saying if you don't have children, you're not a good founder, but I'm saying if you have children, you will understand the patience. If you take care of a very sick person, you'll understand the patience uh, that you need to have. Accountants have that patience. <laughs> And people who are coming from financial world, they have the patience, they are built up for that. So that is why a person who is coming from that field, I will welcome them because they bring a different uh, stability to the team and, and they don't take risk. A, you know, I might be excited with the new investor and then this new offer, but the financial person looks at that and says to me, are you kidding me? You're going to just like, this is, this is a suicide. You won't be doing that. I mean, this is change. You need to hear other person pulling you different perspectives. And that only happens if you have uh, advisors, even you cannot hire them. And that is why I think uh, I got lucky later on to build a team. But in the beginning, I will tell you, it was uh, very difficult, very, very difficult. Do I do it again? I believe what I do, so I am afraid I will do it again. I'm that crazy because 34 years passed, nobody found the drug for my father's while the, the way that he died, and he was 53 years old. And if that is a big problem still, and I do have a solution and I want to make this contribution happen, but if this was just for something else, a new business that you know, I will don't have that much of a big passion on heart. I would not do it. And I am honest on that because you need to have your heart and patience to be in it, to, to, to go for extra mile. And that is the, I think I will say, if I was a professional CEO, I'm paid for that. I will happily do that. No problem. Because you don't have a risk. You do your job. You're doing good job. You do what it is, but founder is very different. Yeah, I'm. You know, a lot of what you said, you know, resonates, you know, with me because I, I 
similar uh, in some in some ways where you know I I, I had a, a, a good job uh, at, at in the big four um, you know doing uh, uh, data and analytics and um, advisory and you know you go from like you said it's not easy money but it's you know money that you, you know you know a, a paycheck is coming as long as uh, you know you, you're able to keep your job that you know that, that you have the money coming in versus, when you leave to go start your own business, you know, there are some months where you say, wow, you know, I made a lot more than than I made, you know, when I was working for someone else. There are months when, you know, you're not making anything and, you know, and, and you have to be willing to say, I'm willing to accept the months where I'm not making anything for the month or two here and there that might be, you know, well above and beyond. So, um, you know, it's uh, you definitely have to be passionate about what you're doing in order to stay in it. Cause it's very easy when you hit certain bumps in the road um, to just say, you know what, maybe, you know, maybe it's not worth it. Maybe, you know, there are other things to do. Um, but, you know, to your point uh, you know, of patience, you know, and being able to, and willing to um, stick with it, to deal with the sacrifices that are required to go and, um, you know, go and do it. Um, you know, in, in the end, um, you know, if you stick with it long enough and you have the right people around you and, um, you know, you're able to do that, that, you know, you're going to be much better off. Um, you know, I think one other thing that you said that really um, uh, strikes out of me is, um, you know, where you said about having the knowledge where, you know, you have that financial knowledge and being able, you know, making you better able to go out and hire somebody for that financial role. Because I think a big mistake that people um, do is they say, all right, I don't have this skill set. I'm just going to go and hire it. And that's great. But you're putting a lot of trust in the person knowing exactly what is needed to be done versus, um, you know, if you have even a basic level of knowledge in that field, you know, directionally, you know, you may not know every single thing that they're doing is this right, wrong, the best way of doing it, the worst way of doing it, whatever it is. But you at least know directionally, this is getting me closer to where I want to go um, versus just kind of blindly saying, you know, OK, I hired, you know, a big company to go and do it. That's great. But, you know, you're also trusting did that big company staff the right people on your project versus, you know, if you have that base level knowledge you know, you, you at least have enough knowledge to know, you know, the right people are on this job, the right people are, you know, making the right decisions and are getting me, you know, closer to, to where I need to be. And one thing I can say, you need to be humble because even when you hire someone that you are working with them or your CPA, we have an internal, they come to the, you know, in, in-house and they work with us. You learn, uh, you learn something new. They do something much faster, and now you are looking. It took like three days for me to do that, and he's doing like so fast. You question yourself. I said, I thought I was doing this well, but this guy is like so fast doing it. And then you you admire, you admire the skill because you understand the area how it it, it may take longer for you. This guy is doing his job very well, and I you know, and you may feel this opposite. He may be there sitting and looking around, not understanding, wasting hours, and you're training him. And then, then you say that this is not what I want to be working with. And so I think without knowing that knowledge, it is difficult. But if you humble yourself, uh, anybody, I love to work with others that knows their business because they may teach you something and they may learn from you some, somehow. Working alone is never ideal. Uh, you might work alone for some things, for innovate, to reflect, to think, to make plans. But uh, the I think to build a plan that will be successful, you need everybody's voice because this is risk. There's a risk. Financial people are good at uh, showing you alternative risk quickly. And they can tell you what might happen if you you know, give up on certain expen expenses and then, or you can say, should I take this money or this money? You know, there's a risk in this one. They can come and do these alternatives with you. If you don't interact with the right people, right time, then uh, sometimes you will get stuck in the box because you wouldn't know what you don't know. 
you would never be able to reach out. And one thing I think it, we are in the fundraise stage right now. So I really, I really need more financial individuals in the team to look or come in to work because when you raise funding, the VCs like to work with the people they know. So if that expertise in somebody with an expertise with fundraising, there is a very valuable skill to me that they are coming as a partner and working with us. So that is the things that I look for right now because that raise is, uh, you know, not small any longer. It's keep, you know, drug development phases are larger. And so you have to look for capabilities that is better. They need to be better than you on the area that you are lacking. And you need to be courageous about working with them because humble, you know, maybe you tell them something else that they don't know, but compliment each other. Because if you if you have it too much ego, you damage the growth. And sometimes you have to be student of the person who comes and tells you, you have to change now because this is not going to work. And that is okay. So I think flexibility and ability to be a student of life uh, is good graces when uh, when you are not always the, you know, I will say if you are not a Bill Gates and if you are not in that kind of a position and the money, then I think you need to learn all the time and you have to listen to everybody around you, no matter what status or rank they have. If they are in your team, you're doomed to listen everybody's voice uh, in that team. Right. And, and that and that's exactly why, you know, we started this show over here where we wanted to make sure that we were sharing all the ideas in terms of what what works well, what you know, what are things to focus on and how to improve, um, you know, yourself at the at the end of it, because, you know, there's not a lot of knowledge out there. And, you know, to your point, it's, you know, it's easy to just say, hey, look, I've been doing this for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, whatever. I think I figured out enough of what I need to figure out. But then you talk to enough people and you realize that, oh, hey, there's this if I just implement this one little tip from this person and this other little tweak from this other person, you know, now the the ROI that I get from something like that is, you know, orders of magnitude better than, you know, what I would have learned on my own. And, you know, it's a matter of, sharing those ideas, you know, connecting those people together to make sure that, you know, that that everything is uh, as optimal as it can be. Yes, and I think uh, I think about this opportunity. I mean, I'm I'm thankful for being here because not many people ask me about my financial side of the the problems or issues or experience. They are more interested in, you know, how did you get this investor money? Well, you don't get that money if you don't build a structure. You don't get a government money even. Even you win the contract, you are not qualified if you don't have systems and books and accounting systems that is appropriate to get that funding. You cannot get an insurance <laughs> at the end if or contract. Each contract will have to require you. So if you sign something without... You know, if you are if you're a legal person, you are an ethical person. You wouldn't say yes, I have the system, and sign and build the system. If even if you did that, now you're doomed to build the system ASAP in the first two weeks. So then you are calling people, bringing people, and I don't know if I want to be, uh, you know, be that way, uh, and I don't want to be uh, mentoring people that way. And that's why if I am telling people, I want to. I want people to be successful wrong long time with your their dreams and build a legacy uh, in the dream even if they wanted to be a trader like 3 years 5 years if that is their legacy then I want to learn from them how they do that you know but it is not an idea like I have or a mission like I have probably something different right and and that is not, I'm aware about it. So I don't build that one. What I build is if you have a dream and if you want to contribute to the society with a solid product in the life science, like a drug or an uh, idea of innovation that you are bringing and there's not existing still last 34 years, nothing still exists. And that kind of things I think will require uh, mature teams and that maturity doesn't come from your age, from your experience. Some people very young, but they are very grounded and mature. 
and it is their heart and it is their uh, the way that they look into the uh, life and the understanding of the vision and uh, understanding of the risks is important so I think uh, I didn't have the chance to listen to this kind of podcast. So I was very blind and the blindness had a good thing because I, I took so much risk without knowing what I was doing. And in the beginning I said, yeah, I can do it because my father died. I have the patience. Yes, I just quit my job. I have some money doing, but when the money goes down, 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 and you're like, what did I do? You know, <laughs> now we have to learn. And that is why these things, the, the knowledge in here will make people, especially very young and naive, I will tell, those to think and rethink and make a plan before they jump into that and get the right people into their team one way or other. I think this is a very useful for, for people who are want to do it, but they may be too naive that this is not an easy thing to do it. Right. Yeah, no, that's that's great advice. I know we're uh, we're just about out of time over here. Uh, you know, really appreciate you know having you on the uh, on the podcast here. Um, you know, I, I guess just a, a last question of you know what's the best way for you know if, if anyone in uh, watching this wants to get in contact with you, has any follow up questions? Is it you know LinkedIn or there other um, you know social channels that that you prefer? LinkedIn is very uh, good for me. We are looking for partners right now, investors and, and people who will build with us. And we welcome anyone uh, that would like to come to the drug area, heart failure area, and, and, and have a knowledge in this field. So AANAC at invivosciences.com, which is on our website, www.invivosciences.com. Or uh, they can find my Ilan Nach LinkedIn. I am very visible in the LinkedIn. And they can uh, connect with me and I will connect with all of you right now through the LinkedIn. And I would love to share this podcast with others as well on my uh, channel. But maybe they can also find you because it seems like you are doing something very really useful for many people looking for individuals in the finance. I might be even needing that as I have to grow the company. And, and I am not going to be the one that doing all uh, the work uh, in this case because of the division of work requirement when you receive financing. Uh, and that is why I think uh, this will be wonderful. But thank you. It was exciting to meet both of you uh, and your team and yourself. And thank you for inviting Thank you so much. It was great having you on. I mean, you shared a, a ton of great insights. You know, like I said before, this is, you know, this is why we do um, this channel is to, you know, make sure that we have, you know, great uh, people like you on, on the show here. So highly encourage anyone watching to make sure that, you know, you like, comment, subscribe to the channel so that we can get other great uh, guests on the show as, as well. <laughs>